everyone. Welcome to Go Publish Yourself, an Ingram Spark podcast. This episode is sponsored by JKS Communications, helping authors get their books noticed by influencers, tastemakers, and readers via book marketing and publicity services. As a special offer, Ingram Spark publishers receive a 15% discount on book publicity. Hi, I'm Robin Cutler, director of Ingram Spark. And I'm Justine Bilo, and I manage the author acquisitions program. Hi, Robin. Hey, Justine. So today, I'm really excited about this topic. We're going to be talking about how do you sell your indie book into chain stores. And when I say chain stores, I mean like Barnes & Noble, Walmart, Target. So Ooh. this is a topic I know you've talked about this a lot, Justine. Mm -hmm. This is a topic that we often get questions about. So um, I'm, I'm, tons of uh, because, you know, even though this is, uh, you know, digital age, you know, uh, most authors would love to see their books really on the store of a major uh, on the shelf of a major store. So. Oh, totally. That's like the complete author dream, like to walk into a Barnes & Noble and to see their their book on a shelf. Like It, I, it brings me to tears when I see one of my <laughs> author's books on a shelf. I mean, to, so to think about your baby on a shelf, it's amazing. <laughs> yes, it really is. So today we are really fortunate to have with us Lauren Charles, who is the uh, national account manager at Ingram uh, to talk about, you know, what she does in helping, you know, authors and even publishers uh, get their books onto these major chain store shelves. So welcome, Lauren. Hi, thank you both. I'm super excited to be here. And let me just also say, uh, I have a, a special place in my heart for Lauren Charles. She at one time was the marketing manager for Ingram Spark, and and uh, she's really, really smart. We got to know her really well. She did a great job for Ingram Spark and knows a lot about Ingram Spark. So she's actually just the right person to talk about this topic as far as I'm concerned. Oh, thank you, Robin. You know, working with Spark is always a joy. And um, I will say that I did take my experience working with Ingram Spark and the, the plethora of publishers and authors that come through Spark. And I've used that actually multiple times in my relationships with uh, multiple national accounts, including Barnes and Noble. So I'm super happy to to see where those two um, experiences overlap and to share anything that might be helpful. So let's uh, jump right into this, Lauren. So, you know, just describe the difference between uh, an indie bookstore and a chain store for, for our listeners. Sure, of course. And, you know, as I'm sure most Ingram Spark users know, um, you know, when it comes to an indie, it's all about personality and it's all about the community that Indie is trying to connect with. And with a chain store, they are also connecting with the community, but their community is more global, right? They are trying to make a consistent experience so that no matter where you are in the country, if you walk into a Barnes & Noble, you're going to feel at home. Um, so that's just, you know, the way they connect with readers, which as authors and publishers, we should always be paying attention to since the way they try to connect with your readers should also be the way you try to connect with them. Um, so that's just an important thing to keep in the back of your mind. But then the other big re difference between an indie and a chain store is, of course, their buying methods, right? Indies are going to rely on that gut instinct, that, um, you know, that it factor when it comes to a buyer, right? They're going to be paying attention mm -hmm. to the author, the publisher, the community, what their readers love to read. And, and a, an indie is going to be is really going to stand behind their buyer's choice. Uh, and that's great. And that works on a small scale. And then a chain bookstore is going to try to take a much different approach, right? They obviously, um, they're going to have a buying decision that comes down from the top. It's going to trickle down to the stores. And then those stores are meant to, again, you're trying to create a consistent experience for all your customers as they walk into a store so they're going to take that and that and then they're going to tweak it just a little bit so then those stores are going to have a small bit of discretionary spending for bringing in uh, that local flavor that community those local authors okay so uh that's really fantastic lauren so what what do you think a, an author would need uh, before they approach uh, a chain store 
Can you kind of give us some like uh, recommendations? Sure, sure. I mean, so the main thing to remember with, when you're approaching an indie or a chain store is that it is a business. Uh, and so you have to be prepared. You have to come in knowing, know your stuff, right? Know what that store is going to look for. Know what the terms they're looking for. Understand their lingo. Um, so a box store, um, so any any major store, any major player is going to be looking always for um, a regular discount and returnability. Um, those two things are going to be super important. And what's that regular discount count, Lauren? Sure. So for the most part, what you're talking about is um, a retailer is going to buy from the distributor, whether that's a wholesaler or directly from the publisher, at at least a 40% discount. That does not mean that's the discount that you as a publisher sets for the, uh, for the ah. book. That is what you're selling to the bookstore at. So that's always important. Yeah. So, Robin, that's like what we've talked about before about those full trade discounts, right? Mm hmm. So in Ingram Spark, to be able to ensure that your book shows to the retailer, and I know we've talked about this some, Justine, um, at a 40 percent discount that Lauren just talked about. Um, you need to set your book up in Ingram Spark at at least a 53 percent discount to ensure that. Isn't that right? Justine? Yeah, you have to set it up at at least 53 to 55% and then to get that full trade discount. And then also to Lauren's point, make that book returnable to make it enticing to those buyers. Yes, that's extremely important just because, like I said, when it comes to any type of chain store, uh, their buying decisions are handed to them, right? It is coming from a macro level buy, right? Someone's going to be in the headquarters are going to decide how many number, like what number of books are going to each store based on the region. And so, right, stores themselves, when you walk into a Barnes and Noble, let's say, and you talk to that manager, they have a very small amount of wiggle room when it comes to the titles they're allowed to bring in. And hence, that wiggle room is made exponentially larger if the titles they bring in, the, the ones that they're going to risk, if they're going to take a chance on a title, if that title is returnable, suddenly that risk is not so risky, right? So if they, ah. only, if they, if they already have a small amount of discretionary spending, right, they're only allowed to bring in so many books, if it's non-returnable, it's almost a non-starter because suddenly that, that yeah. risk they took, it's the only one they can take. Oh, totally. And in also in your mind, what else also helps them take that risk? Um, you know, just like uh, this is again, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, you know, it seems harder to approach a Barnes and Noble, obviously, because they're corporate and they're large, or really any chain store, BAM, Walmart, Target, what, whoever you're trying to get into. Uh, it seems so much harder. It seems almost anonymous. Um, but at the core, they're looking at every, like the same they're looking for the same things that any indie is looking for. And that is an audience to sell to someone who's interested in what you have to say. So if you're going to walk into a Barnes and Noble or a BAM uh, and you want to try to get your book on that local author's table, show to them that they have people around them in their community. Again, the readers that Barnes and Noble themselves are trying to connect to and make sure, make that connection for them, show them that you can bring someone into the store. Um, or if, if you have a different approach, maybe an author event isn't the approach you take to selling your books into retailers, but whatever that approach is, uh, make sure that it, it makes sense to them, right? Understand what a box store is trying to do. And, and, mm. and suddenly you, you know, you can speak to them on their level. Hmm. Does something like a sell sheet help too? Yes. A sell sheet. And in fact, if you can walk in with something that says, you know, that has your title, the cover of your book, make sure that cover looks nice, make sure um, mm -hmm. it, you know, pops. Um, and then, and I would, I would highly recommend to anyone who's coming in, um, indie press, small press, anything like that, anyone who's coming into any level bookstore, um, you should be able to say with absolute certainty, this is how you can order my book. This is the discount I know you can get it at. And I know it's returnable and I can even help you I can facilitate that for you, right? I can make it so easy. You don't even have to think about it. I will just make sure this can show up in your store. Interesting. So does being with Ingram help with that, help facilitating that sale? Yes, uh, 100%. And the reason it does is, of course, um, anyone who's been in the book industry has seen 
a plethora of partners come and go. And Ingram is one of the most steadfast. We've been here for decades. Uh, yeah. We uh, are reliable. And, and that, in, especially in such a quickly changing industry, um, that reliability, the knowledge that, uh, you know, you have all of these little pop-up places open up that sell tons of things, distributors of books. And, and a lot of those can offer really quick services and a high value right up front. But, and anyone who's done their research on the book industry knows this, the longevity of sales is in long tail right? A book that is not brand new. That's where you get your first hit of sales. But really, where you make your money is those consistent, those consistent sales, those customers that come back for the next book and the next book or read the backlist of an author they've suddenly fallen in love with. And that that is reliability. That's where the reliability of Ingram really comes into play. Um, because mm -hmm. You, as long as you know your title will be in Ingram and is available from Ingram, then all of these relationships that you're making, Ingram will keep that relationship independent of anything else. So uh, that availability gotcha. is always open to you. Huh. Really interesting. Yeah, it solves a problem. Oh, totally. It, and having that availability, that is absolutely key. Because if you can't actually go buy the book from a distributor, then uh, that's a huge barrier. Right, Robin? Yeah, that's right. That's, that's completely right. Um, we've had a number we've had a number of um, of actual authors that have come our way who were directed to us uh, from Barnes and Noble where, you know, they approached Barnes and Noble and said, you know, this is a great book and Barnes and Noble agreed and, and their book wasn't set up uh, through Ingram spark or, or, or was available through Ingram. And what's great now is you can, you know, easily set that book up in Ingram spark where Barnes and Noble then has access to it. So it's kind of, um, if you're really wanting to see your book in chain stores, it's almost like uh, something that you have to do and and we're happy that Ingram Spark is there kind of to make that easy for you. Oh, 100%. Yeah, I I have um there will be small presses uh independent of Spark, right? Just, you know, they are just these small presses out of Minnesota or wherever. They're just these cute little mom and pop presses and they um very frequently will try to set up a direct relationship with Barnes and Noble or BAM or whomever. And um and in fact, very frequently they direct them to try to establish a relationship with Ingram. Again, because it speaks to um longevity and it speaks to reliability. And Ingram, you know, tends to vet our partners very closely. So if you come in with that Ingram brand attached to your to your name, to your company, uh, it speaks to some, I would say some knowledge of the industry, which I also would see, say is appealing, right? Mm. I mean, and I'm sure you guys have covered this in the past, right? The barrier to publishing is, mm -hmm. is super low. And that means that's great. It means that everyone can share their story. Everyone can take part in the power of words. And that as someone in the industry is something we always want to encourage. But it also means that when you are a big retailer, you are now flooded with, you know, a ton of options of titles to bring in. And so when you have the backing of a known and trusted name like Ingram, it goes a long way. Yeah, it just takes your book to a whole nother level. Yeah, it makes it professional. Totally. So one of my questions is once you get your book into one of these chain stores, uh, what actually, like, how do you promote your book? You know, it's great to get it on the shelf, but you actually want people to buy your book. So do you have any tips for promoting your book? Sure. Again, I would, I would pay attention to the retailer you're trying to work with, right? So um, obviously I work the most with Barnes and Noble, so I'll use them as an example. Um, right. Barnes and Noble, one of the ways that they are trying to allow those stores to really connect with their specific communities is through social media, specifically Instagram. Right. So oh. learn, learn that, learn that about the store you're trying to connect with, see what they're doing, pay attention to the events they're already promoting. Right. You know, pick an event that sounds interesting to you. Watch how Barnes and Noble is promoting that. Watch how they're trying to engage with community. Watch what that author's doing. And then, you know, try to mimic that or take your own spin or improve upon it even better. Uh, but more specifically, 
um, like anything else, it comes down to the community that you can engage. And Barnes and Noble, like every other retailer out there, is trying to is trying to connect in the spaces that their readers are already living their lives. And that for mm. a lot of people is Instagram or other social media platforms. So find one that fits well for you. Um, and in fact, I know Ingram Spark has done some past webinars on social media connectivity. Always great for a rewatch. Um, yeah. and, those, and, and those will give you a lot of great tips on how to connect with those readers. I will say this, that being an Ingram Spark um, client means that your connectivity to barnesandnoble.com and a lot of other online retailers is already uh, implied, right? So as long as you're an Ingram Spark customer who's setting up for distribution, your titles will automatically show up on sites like jet.com, barnesandnoble.com, you know, things like that. Oh, that's awesome. So that also that's helps. super yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah. It's a no brainer, really. Well, you know what? We we are really running out of time here. Um, so I want to uh, and, and I think maybe there's more information. Maybe we'll do another podcast on this, Justine. I think this is yeah. a really good topic to we continue. We need to have Lauren to come back. Um, <laughs> but I want to invite everyone to. Uh, yes. Uh, and I miss Lauren every day that uh, she's not still part of the Ingram Spark team. But um, but oh, I, thanks, I would Robin. like to uh, ask everyone to join us for our next episode. We talked about retailers uh, this time. Next time, we're going to talk about how to get your books into libraries. So, um, as always, uh, follow us on social media. Uh, if you're not an Ingram Spark customer, you know, go to ingramspark.com. There's a lot of great information there. Sign up for our blog. And until next time, um, you know, we thank you for joining us. Thank you, Justine. Great talking to you. And thank you, Lauren. Thanks, Thank Robin. you both. Yes, thank you.